A regular supermarket is selling 3D printers for 500 bucks, but are they suitable for a regular consumer? So Audi is selling 3D printers again for only 500 bucks. As an experienced 3D printer user, I reckon that's a bargain and I snapped one up. But what about the general member of the public? Do they really know what they're getting themselves into? I bought one of the printers and a couple of rolls of filament and I'm gonna pretend that I'm completely new to 3D printing to test if this is a true plug and play experience. Time to get out of this room and take over one of the family tables. So I've managed to steal half of the table tennis table and unbox the printer. Can you believe some people make their whole video about just that? Time to read the instructions and do exactly what they say. So that's the frame together and that was really straightforward. Let's go on to the next step. Electronics plugs were even easier than that. Let's proceed. There's not much left from the bag. We've got a few cable ties and some little rubber pieces. So let's see what the instructions say and turn on the printer and see if it works. Step one, leveling the bed. Okay, I've got to manually turn the thumb wheels as far as they'll go to get the bed as low as possible. Next step is to make sure this gantry is parallel. So I'm meant to eyeball it and then use something to jam it in there and run it from side to side to see if the distance is the same. Press level wizard on the touchscreen panel and follow the steps as indicated. I believe I'm meant to use this business card and put it on the platform and then turn the thumb wheels until I can just feel it touching between the nozzle and the bed. So let's give that a go. Seems like a long distance to start with, but we'll give it a try. So we've run into our first problem and that is the thumb wheel has got to the end of its travel and there's still a good 5mm in between the nozzle and the bed. Turns out that instruction at the beginning about turning all of them anti-clockwise put it so far away from the nozzle it didn't look like it was ever going to touch. So what I've done is turn them all the other way, clockwise a long way, and it seems like it's pretty close to the nozzle. In fact if I try and slide the piece of paper under like the instructions describe, it just gets stuck. So I think I'm ready to continue. So it turns out the X gantry was not in fact parallel with the bed. I've had to fight the stepper motor, turn the lead screw by hand, and now it seems like it's just touching. So mission accomplished for now, I hope. Okay, that should be all four level. Could be a little bit off because I had to adjust the gantry, but we'll see how we go from here. The next step in the quick start guide is to load filament. So I'm gonna follow the instructions and use the on-screen interface. At this stage I'm going to use the small sample roll that came with it before I open the proper one kilo roll of filament.
It seems there's a little wisp of filament already hanging out the top of the extruder. It's pretty subtle. If I was new to 3D printing, I might not notice it. So I'm gonna try and put it in remove filament mode and see if I can get that out first. Because at the moment, as I try and feed in the new filament, the stepper motor is clicking and it's just jamming. And that is what you call a fail. For some reason it's trying to go up and up and up and there's no end stop at the top so that sound you can hear is the stepper motor is clicking as it tries to unscrew itself and disassemble. Little adjustment of the bed height in that corner because I could see it was compressing the springs. And that's probably suited with when the gantry wasn't straight and I altered it halfway through the leveling process. Let's try and unload this filament and load in the new one once more. I've got a little something. I had to get a tool that wasn't part of the supply tool, so that's not the best. But most people will probably have tweezers or some skinny pliers. Let's try and reload the filament. I have no idea why it's doing this this slow. There seems to be a definite issue around the way it lifts up and homes in between adding and removing filament. It's very frustrating. Once again, it's gone way too high. I'm gonna to have to turn it off and on again to stop it from hitting the top, but this time very slowly. We're on. Now an experienced user knows to cut a sharp point onto the end of the filament, but there's nothing in the instructions about that. That was quite difficult to get it to feed correctly. Let's hope it comes out correctly the other end. Great, I'm gonna call that done. The instruction manual now suggests that we insert the SD card and there's some pre-loaded files on there. So let's see if they live up to their promise. Felt like it definitely wanted to break. I hope it's not in upside down. Well, it was in fact upside down because it went in with a satisfying click the second time round. I've double checked the instructions and there's nothing at all about which way to face it. There's no diagrams on the printer. So that could be a little bit better for new people. That's for sure. Let's attempt to print. I think I'm gonna go with a Space Star 50. All right, let's set up a time-lapse. This appears to be a complete success, so let's get it off the build plate and have a closer look. With these surfaces, you've got to make sure that you slide in the scraper from a very flat angle, otherwise you'll rip the surface and that's the end of it. It does come with two spares, but we want to preserve those for as long as possible. We've got our finished star. Surface quality is excellent, much better than my old solo doodle. It's not tall enough to see the side layer height, but this is a really encouraging result. I believe this might be a raft on the bottom, although since I didn't process the file and create the G-code myself, I just have to assume that. Let's see if we can peel it off to test. So that's a fantastic first print, I'm really impressed with that. The quick start guide didn't have instructions for every component. We have some cable ties and we have some, what I assume are rubber feet left over, as well as some plastic tube. So I think it's time we turned our attention to the instructions and see what they say about slicing software. These instructions are actually excellent. There is nothing about installing these minor components, but it seems not very important. So we'll let that one slide. Time to get onto the slicer software. 
There's a single page in the instruction manual called preparing to print a file. It gives a website address which loads up this page. So let's go ahead and download the most recent version. It says in the manual to enter this URL if we're going to download the latest profile for Cura, but unfortunately we have a problem here. We're going to follow the links however and see how far we can get on the website. We do have a page for the printer and down the bottom we do have a support button which takes us to another site, but then we have the link that we're looking for which is the Cura profiles. We're going to follow the instructions exactly, so we're going to go to custom for our printer. Cocoon create touch. The instructions don't actually have values for most of these, so we'll just enter what we can. So the width and depth, 200. Height, 180. Nozzle size is already 0.4. Tick heated bed. And then finish. So we're ready to bring something in and a lot of this is probably going to be daunting for someone just starting out. So we will follow their advice and put in the latest profile because hopefully that will stop us having to think about a lot of these things. So we'll follow our nose and go to settings, profile and manage profiles. And then I notice an import button here. You can click our PLA profile and it has imported successfully. It's not very obvious on what you need to do to get it. You need to change it from recommended to custom and then in the drop down it should appear assuming you still have our printer we've created selected. Not happy with all of the settings in particular the 0.1 millimeter layer height that's going to make for a very slow print but we'll leave everything exactly how it is to have the true beginner's experience. Next up we're going to load up a file to print and what better of course than a 3D Benchy. Cura has sliced it for us, although it doesn't automatically give a preview, so go ahead and save it to a removable drive. Eject, and let's go and hit print. So before the print I did change the filament and yes that same problem happened again. It went up to the top and tried to jam. Some sort of little bug, maybe a firmware update will fix that. So how did that print turn out? Well, not the best. Just to check that it was in fact the Cura profile, I printed a second one in Simplify 3D at 0.2 layer height and all of the default settings there. You can see when I compare them side by side that the difference in quality is just immense. The one slice with the dodgy profile in Cura is under extruded to the point where the shade of orange looks so much lighter. It's very frail and weak and the chimney's falling off just from handling it lightly. The one in Simplify 3D however is good enough quality that it vindicates the printer's build quality and mechanical accuracy. I'm really happy with how it's turned out given I just used the default settings and I haven't really played with anything. So let's answer our original question. Is the printer suitable for a common person with no experience in 3D printing? I'd have to say yes it is. It was easy to put together, the instructions and written documents were really really good and most importantly the print quality was excellent. The obvious weak link is the underwhelming lack of documentation for using your own slicer software. I think the average user would be much better ignoring the custom profile we downloaded and just using the recommended settings, changing the two sliders until they found a happy medium. In time they would be able to build up their knowledge by experimenting and reading articles and watching YouTube videos until they were able to tackle the more advanced settings in Cura or another slicer for that matter. I like this printer so much that it's caused to retire my old Solidoodle 2 and you'll be seeing it a lot more until my Mark III i3 arrives in a few months. See you next time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.